Welcome back to 31 Days of Your Scrapbooking Q&As. Today's sponsor is Simon Says Stamp, your one-stop shop for stamping and paper crafting. Tons of great products, including Kelly Perky's new line. Head over to simonsaysstamp.com. Welcome back. I'm your host, Lane Amon, and absolutely thrilled to welcome you back for another day of questions and answers. If you're just joining us now, we're doing this all month, 31 days of a your scrapbooking Q&As. Here's how it works. You submit the questions, I answer them, you get your answer in video, podcast on, on my blog, and you can win fabulous prizes. You get entered in a drawing for cool prizes just by submitting a question. And if your question is chosen to be answered, you will receive this gorgeous kit designed by Tracy Reed of Sweet Shop Designs just for us. Today's question, Lois asks, my question is, how do I know which paper to use with which ink? What are the differences between the various types of inks? I want to start using more ink on my scrapbook pages and cards, but I don't know where to start. Thanks again for running this feature again. I learned a lot last time. Thank you, Lois. And in case you didn't catch 31 Days last year, we did it in 2012 as well. And that's where we got the idea. And we're making it even bigger and better this year, but there's lots of great information. So if you go back to my blog, layoutaday.com, and pull up the archive for July 2012, you can catch 31 Days there as well. Tons and tons of, of great content, questions, and fun. But to get to, to Lois's question about inks, there are three main types of ink. There is a pigment ink, there is a dye ink, and there is a solvent ink. Those are the three types that you'll find in ink pads. And they also can come in pens as well, but pens are a little bit separate. So I'm, I'm assuming that Lois is as, uh, asking about stamp pad inks because she's talking about using them more on scrapbook pages and cards. So the solvent ink is an ink that will stamp basically on any type of surface. Um, it is a permanent ink and it is alcohol based and that means that it is wet for a while and then as the alcohol evaporates it, it becomes dry. It is perfect for stamping on um, coated cardstock like the shiny cardstock or on plastic but the thing is it takes a while to dry so while it's permanent um, it also is going to be smearable until it completely dries so you need to be aware of that. Solvent ink isn't used a ton in standard scrapbooking because it's not necessary. Typically, the um, things we're stamping on are not a glossy coated. However, if you stamped on a photo, you would want to use a solvent ink for that. Think of it as a photo pen or a Sharpie. It's kind of equivalent to that. Now, there are Pigment inks and dye inks are the remaining two categories that you'll find used most frequently in stamping and crafting for scrapbooks. Pigment ink is um, little tiny particles of pigment and they remain uh, wet, I guess you could say, longer than the dye ink. So if you're planning to emboss, they give a great rich color that stays wet. So when you sprinkle the embossing powder, you have a little bit longer time to work with it. Dye inks dry very, very quickly. They soak into the paper and dry very quickly. So if you're embossing, you're not necessarily going to want to use a dye ink. So those are the two main differences between the pigment and the dye ink. The dye ink, I think, tends to run a little bit less in terms of money, but but you can use them on any kind of paper. If you are stamping, um, you're going to want to use a smooth cardstock or smooth paper base versus using a, um, a highly textured base because when you stamp, you're going to lose parts of the images because the, the texture that you're stamping on is so rough. So oftentimes the best images, the most clear, sharp images are going to come from a smooth cardstock. Now the other thing I need to talk about is Copic markers. Copic markers are very, very popular in scrapbooking and stamping right now, and they are specific, uh, specifically formulated to blend. They are alcohol-based, which means that if you use them to color in a stamped image, oftentimes this, the original image that you stamp can bleed or get smeared. So you need to use an ink that is recommended 
to um, stamp before you color in with Copics. And the number one that's recommended over and over again is the Memento Tuxedo Black. It is a dye-based ink, but it is non-smearing. So when you stamp your original image and then you start coloring, you're not gonna get black bleeding into the rest of your image as you're coloring. So that's something important to keep in mind as well. It also dries very, very quickly because it is a dye ink, it soaks in, and you can start coloring almost immediately. The other thing about Copics is there are certain types of cardstock that you're going to get a better result with. And the number one that most people recommend is the Nina, and that's spelled N-E-E-N-A-H, the Nina paper, and you can get it at our sponsor, Simon Says Stamp. Um, and I'll put links in the show notes to all this, so in case you're looking to get some, you can find it there. There are several other papers you can use, but the Nina is the one I prefer, Jennifer McGuire prefers it, and basically anything Jennifer says I listen to. So that's your answer as far as different kinds of inks, different kinds of papers. Just my best advice is to start experimenting. Try a few, pick up an address, a distress ink from um, Tim Holtz, pick up a small cat's eye, and those are ink pads that are shaped like a cat's eye and they're only a dollar or so each and play with it see how you like it see what works best for the look you're going for and then start there thanks so much for submitting your question i'll be back tomorrow